Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Power Factor. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical explanation of power factor, the causes of low power factor, power factor correction, and power factor measurements. Power factor and current harmonics are often interrelated. We'll only briefly mention current harmonics in this presentation, so please see this separate presentation, Understanding Current Harmonics, if you'd like to learn more about this topic. Let's start by reviewing power. As you should already know, power is the product of voltage and current. If the load is purely resistive or linear, both the voltage and the current will be sinusoidal and in phase. Maximum power transfer will occur because the voltage and current maximums occur at the same time. In this situation, all power is active power, usually abbreviated P. Active power is defined as the power that is transferred to, or dissipated by the load, that is the power that performs so-called useful work. Active power is measured in the familiar unit of watts. However, if the load has a reactive component, then the voltage and current will not be in phase. Vmax and Imax will occur at different times, so maximum power transfer will not be achieved. The direction of the phase shift between voltage and current depends on the nature of the reactants. If the load is capacitive, voltage will lag the current, and if the load is inductive, voltage will lead the current. Reactive loads create reactive power, abbreviated Q. There are many ways of describing reactive power. One way of describing reactive power is power that's temporarily stored in the system, that is, in the magnetic field of an inductor or in the electric field of a capacitor. When this stored energy is released, it's returned to the source without being consumed and is therefore not dissipated by the load. Sometimes reactive power is described as power that does no useful work. But this is not entirely correct, and is something we'll discuss in more detail in just a moment. Unlike active power, which is measured in watts, reactive power is measured in units of volt amperes reactive. And it's common to hear reactive power referred to as VARs or KVARs. Let's talk a little bit more about reactive power. First, most modern reactive loads are inductive, not capacitive. This includes things like motors, welding equipment, transformers, fluorescent lighting, etc. These kinds of inductive loads consume a significant percentage of power delivered to industrial facilities. Reactive power is the power that creates and maintains magnetic or electric fields. Since a motor requires a magnetic field to spin, this reactive power is not truly wasted or useless, even though it's only being temporarily stored and not being consumed by the load. That said, the reactive part of a load does still draw current, as if it were dissipating power. Therefore, the goal is usually to minimize the amount of reactive power, since this reactive power takes up capacity on the distribution system and can create problems in the system, such as overheating and voltage drops. With the exception of purely resistive loads, most real-world loads require or consume a combination of both active power and some amount of reactive power. This combination is quantified as apparent power, abbreviated S. Apparent power is the product of RMS voltage and RMS current, and is therefore specified in units of volt amperes. Apparent power can be calculated using the load impedance and either current or voltage. But perhaps the most common way that apparent power is represented is in the form of a triangle, since apparent power is also the vector sum of active and reactive power. We'll come back to this triangle in just a few moments. Power factor, abbreviated PF, or sometimes lambda, describes the relationship between active power, that is power absorbed or used by the load, and apparent power, or the total power flowing in the circuit. Therefore, power factor is a measure of efficiency, since it's related to the amount of reactive power that's needed or consumed. Power factor can be measured for an individual device or load, 
or it can apply to a group of loads or an entire facility. Power factor is a unitless quantity between 0 and 1. Higher values of power factor are usually more desirable, and maximum efficiency occurs when power factor is 1, or unity, since this means there is zero reactive power. A power factor of less than 1 means that the supply has to provide more power than what's needed for useful work. Note that in the case where voltage and current are both sinusoids, power factor can be used to quantify the phase shift phi between the two waveforms. Now let's come back to the power triangle, which represents active, reactive, and apparent power as vector quantities. For linear loads, power factor can be calculated by taking the cosine of the phase shift phi between the voltage and current waveforms. Power factor also can be calculated using the ratio of active to apparent power. If we view this triangle as representing complex impedances, then power factor is the ratio of the load resistance R to the complex load impedance Z. It's important to remember that power factor should only be calculated from phase shift phi when the voltage and current waveforms are both purely sinusoidal. We mentioned earlier that low power factor results when the voltage and current waveforms do not have the same shape and or are not in phase. There are two main scenarios in which this occurs. The first is loads with a reactive component, and in practice these loads are almost always inductive loads. As we've seen, these kind of loads create a phase shift or displacement between the current waveform and the voltage waveform, but they do not alter the shape of the current waveform. The second scenario is loads which draw current non-sinusoidally or in a bursty fashion. A very common example of this is a switching mode power supply, which converts or regulates output voltage by rapidly switching the input on and off. This switching creates a distorted, non-sinusoidal current waveform, which lowers power factor even if the sinusoidal voltage and bursty current are still in phase. It's important to differentiate between displacement and distortion when analyzing power factor or when developing methods of improving power factor. Regardless of the cause, low power factor is undesirable because it indicates an inefficient power delivery system. Inefficient means that, compared to a purely resistive load, more current must be drawn to perform the same amount of useful work. This need to draw more current means that low power factor will increase the amount, and thus the cost, of electrical power, since a greater amount of power is needed and consumed. In addition, low power factor can have undesirable effects on the utility grid itself, and most power utility providers will impose a surcharge on business customers whose facilities have a low power factor. Low power factor also increases the cost of equipment. High current draw means that equipment must have higher current ratings and larger lines to handle the increased heat created by higher currents. Both of these can significantly increase system cost. Increased heating can also decrease the useful life of equipment and power distribution infrastructure. Different forms of so-called power factor correction are therefore often needed. Power factor correction refers to methods used to increase the power factor of a load, ideally to one or unity but usually to at least 0.9 or 0.95. Effective power factor correction helps the system run more efficiently, thus saving both utility and equipment costs. In some areas and in some applications, power factor correction is also required in order to meet standards or regulatory requirements. In many cases, the cost of implementing power factor correction is substantially lower than increased utility or equipment costs. Since the number of nonlinear loads has been steadily increasing, the importance of power factor correction has also been increasing, and this is true even for lower power, non-industrial systems. Power factor correction is a very complex topic that we won't cover in detail in this presentation, but in general, the approach used in power factor correction depends on the cause of reduced power factor,
that is, whether low power factor is due to displacement or distortion. In the case of simple displacement, a common approach is to use capacitors to cancel out the inductive reactance and shift the current waveform back into phase with the voltage waveform. For cases in which low power factor is due to distortion, different methods can be used to filter out or reduce the number and magnitudes of the current harmonics in order to produce a more sinusoidal current waveform. Regardless of the approach, power factor correction may be implemented at the device level and or for an entire installation or facility. So how do we measure power factor and evaluate the effectiveness of power factor correction? It's relatively easy to measure the power factor for displaced waveforms. Simply measure the phase angle between voltage and current and take the cosine of this value. However, this approach will not yield accurate results for distorted waveforms, which are often the more common case in modern applications. Therefore, modern power factor measurements usually involve digitally sampling the voltage and current waveforms and using these sampled values to calculate power factor. This provides accurate results for both displacement and distortion. Power factor and power factor correction often change substantially depending on working conditions, so it's important to test under a variety of operating states. And finally, please keep in mind that some power factor measurements may involve high voltages and high currents and can prevent a risk to both devices as well as to human operators. So caution is advised whenever making measurements in these environments. Two categories of instruments are used for measuring power factor, power analyzers and oscilloscopes. Let's take a few moments to look at each of these instruments and how they're used to measure power factor and evaluate the effectiveness of power factor correction. As the name implies, power analyzers are specialized instruments that can be used to measure power factor as well as many other power related quantities. These instruments digitally sample both the voltage and current waveforms in order to calculate numerical results. In most cases, power analyzers can also display the voltage and current waveforms, and this makes it easy to visually determine whether displacement and or distortion are occurring. Typically, a power analyzer has a special adapter for easy connection of mains powered devices. The device under test is simply plugged into the mains adapter which is then connected to the analyzer by a series of cables. Power analyzers also commonly support more advanced features for testing conformance to various standards as well as generation of reports. Oscilloscopes are more general purpose instruments that can also be used to measure power factor and the effectiveness of power factor correction. Two channels are needed in this case, one to measure the voltage waveform and one to measure the current waveform. Note that in order to measure current with an oscilloscope, either a current probe or a differential voltage probe and shunt resistor must be used. Many oscilloscopes have a power analysis option that will automatically measure power factor and related quantities. Using a power analysis application is significantly more precise and efficient compared to manual measurement, even in the case of a simple waveform displacement. Let's end with a brief summary. Power factor describes the relationship between active, reactive, and apparent power. Power factor is a unitless quantity between 0 and 1, with 1 or unity being a purely resistive load in which all power is active power. A low power factor occurs when the current waveform is not in phase with the voltage waveform or is not sinusoidal. These are often referred to as displacement and distortion, respectively. A non-ideal power factor is increasingly common in modern applications, for example in induction motors or switching mode power supplies, and this low power factor leads to poor efficiency and higher costs. Different forms of power factor correction therefore are used to either shift the waveforms back into phase or to reduce the harmonic content of the current waveform and thus make the current waveform more sinusoidal. In order to measure power factor and the effectiveness of power factor correction, two categories of instruments can be used. Specialized power analyzers are often used for mains connected devices, 
since they allow easy connection and many power measurement related functions. Oscilloscopes can also be used to measure power factor using a combination of voltage and current probes and a specialized power analysis application or option. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Power Factor. If you'd like to learn more about power factor, power measurements, or about power analyzers and oscilloscopes, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.